Why not? Uh, hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with my traveling partner on the road to the Final Four, James Brown, and Godfather, uh, a couple of more stops here on the road. Nice train heading down south. Feeling good, though. What do you feel about today's games? First of all, Boston College and Florida. You know what? Even though I know Florida is favored by the slimmest of margins, a lot of people are expecting Boston College to just walk by them. Florida is a very good, very dangerous team, and one that forces you to change your tempo to its style, a moderate pace one. Our first stop will be Miami, where Boston College and Florida will tip in about 40 minutes from now. Vern Lundquist and Clark Kellogg will call that game for us, and they're at Miami Arena right now to set the stage. Vern from basketball, Boston College or Florida will earn a trip to the Final Four with a victory here in the East Regional Final. And I'm sure you all had the Eagles and the Gators in your brackets at home or in your office pool. You probably are as surprised as the selection committee that only one top seed remains. But as we've learned on the road to the Final Four, sometimes you have to say goodbye to old friends. Invitations to the ball were sent out two weeks ago, and first-timers such as Charleston thought they could advance on name only. But their first trip to the show turned into a wake, as Wake Forest buried the Cougars in a 40-minute waltz. Another first-timer was Liberty, whose founder knew the odds were long against North Carolina. It's a 10 trillion to 1 odds, and I've been trying to find somebody to put 10, 10 bucks down with. You know, we, uh, I take that gamble today and ask forgiveness tomorrow. Reverend Falwell was starting to think of collecting his hundred trillion as Liberty was on the verge of pulling off a miracle. They led North Carolina in the second half. But in the end, it was the Dean who prevailed. Are you kidding me? No, we're not. The job Dick Bennett did for Wisconsin Green Bay would have made even Vince Lombardi proud. As it was, Jason Kidd and favored California were sent packing as the Phoenix rose up to win. Still, for the most part, the early round games went according to form until last Sunday. Ten on the shot clock for the Hurricane. Twelve on the game clock. Into the left corner to Dawkins for a three. Yes! With 8.6 seconds left, Dawkins hit a three-pointer. And it's 82 to 78. The Golden Hurricane with the lead. Oh, my goodness! Miller uses the dribble to Damon Key left of the lane. Spins on Martinez. Fade away tougher. Good! How sweet it is! McElvain spins. Hands it back to Tony Miller. He's double teamed. They better hurry. Miller's still in the backcourt. Now in the frontcourt. Miller will go to the bathroom. Plays it up. And in! Over Cricket. And check to the crowd, Homer. They're checking travel reservations. in the open court until they get around in front any foul ought to be intentional two shots and the ball and then if somebody gets killed like that throw him out of the game we just had the best basketball win possibly in the history of boston college and we have to defend ourselves on a on a flagrant foul and we're defending ourselves on rough play against that team please please will somebody please step up and give these kids a little bit of credit well, he did. Bob Knight gave the Eagles all the credit in the world for knocking off his Hoosiers on Friday night. Abrams passes on the shot. Isley takes it. Finally, we've seen some great individual performances in this tournament. Michigan's Juwan Howard has raised his game a notch. Take a bow, Khalid 
Reeves, you've helped lead Arizona into the Final Four. Glenn Robinson tried to carry Purdue into the Final Four. The Boilermakers fell one game short. But the big dog left his imprint on this year's tournament. You bet he did. Purdue's out. Arizona and Duke are in. Two slots filled. Two to go. called March Madness, and it's crazy. That seems like about a hundred years ago. Two coach coaches are, have joined us here, and I'm sure this is the last place they wanted to be this week in the tournament, but Stu Jackson from Wisconsin will be going to the Final Four if they can win today. Now, later today, Michigan plays Arkansas for the last Final Four slot. You know, the Wolverines, in fact, are hoping to make a third straight trip to the championship game. Last year against North Carolina, everybody expected a buzzer beater, but the script took an unexpected turn. You know, it was something, you know, I always wanted to win, and I think that'd be a big part, you know, something for me in my whole college career to win a national championship. And, you know, we got the opportunity, and I'm going to really go for it. The high school level, we won a national title also my senior year. And, you know, I wanted to do that again. I think that, you know, a lot of many people don't get this opportunity that I have, and I got to make the most of it while I'm here. And taking advantage of its opportunity, Michigan seemed in control with under five minutes to play. Huge shot, two-point basket, two-pointer. And of course, that big major stat, Michigan 30-0 when they lead at the five-minute mark. In that situation, uh, you can't waver. Uh, you have to know and have to believe that you're going to be able to win, that you're going to come back from any situation, and if, uh, and if you have any negative thoughts, then you're going to end up in a negative position. Montross back out to Phelps. I think he really won that game for North Carolina. Uh, if it wasn't for the shooting, he would have easily won. Ray Jackson finally broke Carolina's 9-0 run to pull Michigan within three when Steve Fisher called the final timeout with 47 seconds left. What seemed like a certain Carolina crown would now have the swing through one last maze of Michigan momentum. It runs the baseline, looking to get an inbound, down to Reese. Reese stepped on the sideline with 45 seconds remaining. Three to tie. Got it. Oh, it sure looked good. Weber underneath. One point game. North Carolina by one. Michigan has no timeouts left. Michigan fouled Pat Sullivan with 20 seconds left. He made the first free throw to put Carolina up by two. Then destiny would decide on whom time would run out in the battle for the national championship. A two to tie. Michigan will have to bring it. Oh, he walked. He walked and the referee missed it. Weber brings it into the front court. They have no timeouts for Oh, he caught the too many timeouts at the technical foul. He called a timeout. Michigan doesn't yes. have any. We had talked that there, we had no timeouts, and uh, uh, Chris said he heard someone holler and call for a timeout. doesn't matter who told me or if someone told me if somebody didn't, I shouldn't have called it. It's my fault. It was no one else's fault. I think a lot of people still may think that that timeout gave us the national championship or allowed us to really, you know, that was actually the one that sealed it. Um, but I think we're in a pretty good position before then. change it, I wouldn't change it. You know, God puts things in my life for a reason. 
it's only made me a stronger person. I think, you know, I'd rather have a chance to make a mistake like that than to not be a good basketball player. We are just talking here. I don't think anybody's handled adversity like Chris Webber did with that uh, situation there. But a coach's nightmare, what do you do in situations like that? Well, it is a coaching nightmare, but he traveled before the play existed. They still had to score. And what, and what stands out more than anything else is the class that this young man stood for on looking adversity right in the eye and standing up and owning up to his mistake. Yeah, how many prayers do you go through in the final huddle like that and say, I just hope that they've listened and hear everything and are focused? Well, you know, Pat, competition does strange things to us all. Right. And, and sometimes in the heat of the battle, you get some things on the floor that you cannot control. But I absolutely agree with Rick. You know, I was at that Final Four game, and to see that young man 10 minutes after the game's over step into the interview room, admit his mistake, say it was his fault, and then move on with his life was really, I think, uh, what coaching and what we want out of all of our players to, to learn. Yeah, that was actually a defining moment of the Final Four was when he did that. Anyway, we're approaching uh, time for BC in Florida. Vern Lundquist, Clark Kellogg will call the action for us when the road to the Final Four continues here on CBS. See you later. Enjoy the games. the East Regional Final, Boston College against the University of Florida. One of these two teams will join Arizona and Duke already in the Final Four for Charlotte next week. And later this afternoon, Arkansas takes on Michigan. We have Boston College, the number nine seed against third seed in Florida. These two teams meeting for the first time this afternoon. Hi once again, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, and welcome to Miami. Of the eight teams fighting for the final four spots, the surprises this weekend have risen in the East. It, yes, Florida is a third seed, but really a third seed without any kind of national recognition this year, despite 28 victories. And in Boston College, a number nine seed, devastated two weeks ago by Georgetown, all they've done is knock off North Carolina and Indiana in the last week. I'm joined by Clark Kellogg, and Clark Lon Kruger, in his fourth year at Florida, has turned things around, and he's relied on a big guy to help him down inside. That big fella is Demetri Hill. He's one-seventh of a ton when you talk about his weight. Not only does he have girth, but he's got game, too. Look at him post up strongly inside, and he's also got agility. I call him the wide body with soft hands and happy feet, showing you his ability to handle the ball. He is a true force inside. He'll contend with Danier Abel the 6'7 freshman. He goes about 270 and doesn't back down. There will be thunder and thumping in the paint today. Uh, Bill Curley is another of the big men for Boston College, and he was somewhat limited against Indiana the other night. Well, Indiana does such a great job of sloughing off of good inside players, packing it in, and here's a prime example of that. They were able to stymie Bill Curley in terms of the number of touches he got, but you just saw his numbers. He still posted a double-double. Jim O'Brien is now in the eighth year as the head coach of his alma mater at Boston College. These have been sometimes tumultuous seasons and also sometimes tragic, none more so than three years ago when Jim O'Brien lost his 41-year-old wife, Christine. For more on that, here's Leslie Bissell. She played both soccer and basketball. She was diagnosed with a heart condition completely unrelated to her mother's heart condition, and she was cleared to play basketball. In fact, she will play next year at Salem State. Erin is a sophomore guard at Stonehill College. She spent last week playing in the Division II NCAA playoffs in Fargo, North Dakota. Both young women are here today, and they said this is an emotionally mixed experience for them. They said both the mother, the memory of their mother who was with them during all the tough times, and now happiness for their father. Vern. All right, Leslie, we'll be back to meet the starting five for the Florida Gators and the Eagles of Boston College. 
Jazz Sports exclusive. Filtered into Miami Arena, largest college basketball crowd to ever see a game played here. This is the home of the University of Miami. Boston College, of course, a part of the Big East with Miami. And now, to meet the starting lineups for both Florida and Boston College, our public address announcer, Jay Rokish. Arena, side of the 1994 NCAA East Regional Basketball Championships, hosted by the University of Miami. Today's final game features the Eagles of Boston College and the Gators of the University of Florida. Now let's meet the starting lineups for this afternoon's game. At forward for Boston College, a six foot seven inch freshman from Greenberg, New York, number 24, Danye Abram. At forward for Florida, a six foot six inch sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, number three, Brian Thompson. At forward for the Eagles, a six foot four inch senior from Bristol, Connecticut, number 12, Malcolm Huckabee. At forward for the Gators, a six foot 10 inch junior from Clearwater, Florida, number 55, a six foot nine inch senior from Duxbury, Massachusetts, number 15, Bill Curley. At center for Florida, a six foot seven sophomore from St. Petersburg, Florida, number 35, Demetri Hill. At guard for the Eagles, a six foot one inch senior from River Rouge, Michigan, number 23, Gerard Abram. from Stilton, Pennsylvania, number four, Craig Brown. And the guard for Boston College, a six foot three inch senior from Detroit, Michigan, number 10, Howard Isley. And the guard for Florida, a six foot three inch senior from Carbondale, Illinois, number 12, Dan Cross. And introducing the head coaches for Boston College, in his eighth season, Jim O'Brien. And for the University of Florida, in his fourth season, Lon Kruger. Officials for today, Bill Kennedy, Jerry Donahue, and Mark Reichling, the standby official, Dan Chrisman. Boston College is trying to become only the second number nine seed to ever make it to the final four. The lowest seed to get to the final group, Dale Brown's LSU bunch in 86. Penn made it in 79. UCLA and Villanova advanced in 85. And, of course, Villanova won it all as an eighth seed in 1985. Neither Florida nor Boston College has ever made it to the final four. Last time Boston College was in the round of Elite Eight was in 1982. They lost to a Houston team that had a freshman by the name of Elijah Wan who played a little basketball. <laughs> and he's playing quite well now for the Houston Rockets. Curley and DeClerc will tip it up. This is the first meeting ever between these two schools. It is the third game played this year on this court for Boston College because they played Miami. It is only the third game ever played here by the University of Florida. They don't play Miami in basketball. Isley controls for the BC Eagles. Both teams primarily man-to-man -man defensive teams. Obviously, the backcourt matchups bear watching early. Curley pops out, and Dimitri Hill is on him, at least for the moment. Now the switch. Here's Danye Abrams. Underneath, entry pass, Curley. Limited to 11 points the other night. Misses on his first shot. Well, that's a high-quality look, though. Good spacing to get it inside. If they can do that, they'll be successful before the day's over. Good matchup here. Cross and Huckabee, both very physical guards. Saw the quick hands of Huckabee. In their first three games, the Boston College Eagles have had seven steals every night out. And they're very active.
effective. And the reason they can come up with steals is because they have such good foot quickness that allows them to get into position where they can make their hands effective. Abram, Huckabee, back to Curley. Right side to Isley for three. from one side to the other, make the extra pass, and then knock down the open J. Florida brings it back out. This is Dan Cross, and kicked by Howard Isley, a fresh 35, and Florida will inbound. Well, the other night, uh, Clark, the BC guards hit six of their first nine three-point shots. They also had 12 three-pointers in beating North Carolina. And for the tournament, 27 of 62. And it's surely a weapon they use. They shoot about 18 three-point shots per game. So you have to be ready to extend defensively. Here's the clerk. Takes the jumper. Big I haven't seen that in a couple of games. <laughs> They leave him that open, you might see it again. Mm -hmm. You gotta take what the defense gives. Daniel Abrams and the Clark dies for the loose ball. Got the steal, got the orange. Back it goes to cross for three. Good position by Curley, but the Clark gets it for Florida. Brown bumped by Abram, foul on Abram. Watch Andrew DeClerc, who personifies the hustle of this Florida team. These are the intangibles. Good pick inside. Gets his hands on it, and then just beats everybody to the ball by going to the floor. And that's the element he brings. He leaves the club and board, but he brings those intangibles, that hustle, that desire, that emotion. And obviously, a team can feed on that. Brown. Abram saves it for Boston College. Clark can't handle the low bounce pass. Boston College ball. And sometimes the long bounce pass, depending on the floor, will die upon coming up. See, let's see. See, that ball actually never got up waist high. It stayed flat. And that would have been a tough pass for a baseball player to handle. It's not a matter of physics or technique. Combination, that's a combination of the two. They got Demetri Hill. Fouling Curley. Here's first and the first team foul. Florida now in the zone. Again, most college teams will zone the out-of-bounds play, trying not to give up a quick shot. Here's Curley. That's money, Barn. He got an excellent stroke from about 18 feet in and with nobody within five feet of him. Mark that one up and go back and play deep. Bill Curley averaging 20 per game, held to 11 the other night despite the victory. They collapse around Hill. He gets it back to Thompson. He takes the jumper and the tip rolls around and in. Got his own. 5-4, Boston College. 16-34 to go first half. Look at Abram and Hill banging bodies in there. There's a slight similarity to sumo wrestling. <laughs> well, there's certainly plenty of, plenty of beef and little room to operate in that pain. And Hill now has picked up his second, and he is their only true low post presence offensively. Svein Dirkelboten, the young man from Bergen, Norway, who doesn't play a lot, will have to play now for Dimitri Hill. I think the three-point shooting becomes more important for Florida, who hasn't shot it well from behind the arc in the tournament. Without Dimitri Hill, I think they've got to look to knock down some triples here in the first half. Turnover against Danny Abrams. Dimitri Hill looks on. Yeah, I was really impressed with him 
in, at the press conference yesterday, obviously the questions come a dime a dozen regarding his weight, and he handled them politely and calmly and candidly, and he knows that he's a basketball player, and I think a lot of people fail to realize what kind of commitment both he and Danye Abrams have made to lose weight. Both of those guys have come down an awful lot from the beginning of the year, which is a credit to their work habits and discipline. Between the two, more than 100 pounds, mm -hmm. and it's not over. Thompson guarded by Isley. Shoots it over him. Rebound, Danye Abrams. He got up there. 5-4 BC lead. Abrams. Oh, dandy. Jerome, Uncle Jones, then I like it. And he is by far the most excitable of the four seniors who start for Boston College. That sometimes is not a positive. It works against him on occasion, but more times than not, they need his energy and fire, and Craig Brown returns the favor on the triple. It was Craig Brown who hit the killer shot from three the other night in the win over UConn. Here's Abrams. Rebound Thompson for Florida, and a chance for Florida to take the lead. Abrams with the pump, Dirkel Bowden with the foul, and Danye Abrams will be shooting two. The personal foul is charged to number four. Svane Dirkel Bowden, who uh, is referred to, Clark, by his teammates as the eye chart. What because <laughs> not enough fouls in that last name. Here's DeClerc. And Dirkel Bowden stays in the lineup. Quizma, Marty Quizma, who's the second stalwart in the Scandinavian skyline. We just go heavy on the nicknames here. <laughs> Danye Abrams. And we got it corrected. We referred to him a little bit the other night as Danye. Here you take a look at the clerk. This is just an excellent transition opportunity. BC a little slow getting back. And the clerk determined to get an easy one. Outran the Eagle. Abrams gets them both. 14-46 remaining first half of play. Boston College Eagles. Gerard Abrams a little excited. The first time I switched pain relievers, it was from aspirin to Tylenol. Then recently, I... ...on the wide open three because Boston College made the extra pass. There it is, right there. He knocked it down. And that is good basketball, folks. Brown and Cross continue in the backcourt for Florida now. Kuzma's in, along with Dirk Bolton and Thompson. So the clerk and Dimitri Hill on the bench for the Gators. You know, Vern, we often have talked about BC's three-point shooting, and it's one of the reasons they've been able to win three tournament games despite being outshot by the opposition. But they're a pretty good defensive club, as evidenced right there. Yeah, the shot came with two seconds left on the shot clock, and at the other end, Abrams has the shot altered. It's tipped out of bounds by Florida, and Boston College will bring it in bounds. Three-point field goals, Boston College two of three. Dimitri Hill, two fouls and no points so far. 10-9, Boston College. Abrams, oh, dandy. Oh, what a defensive play underneath. Well, that was excellent offense, but better defense. Good recovery that time by the Gators inside. Wiesma for three. Oh. Isley grabs the rebound. Boston College in transition. Tries to find Danye Abrams. Dirkle Bolton gets the ball, saves it. Here comes Florida on the run. Craig Brown. Paul Grant getting ready to check in for Boston College. time I think for the Florida guards not only to look for the three but to also look to penetrate Dimitri Hill is not inside to take up space in the lane so dribble penetration might be more available now Dan Cross got the last basket that ball went 30 feet in the air 
looked like a volleyball serve. Somebody punched it for the Gators trying to save it. He sent it upstairs. Here it is. Right there. There it is. Cross and Brown both gave it a punch and couldn't keep it alive. Paul Grant checks in now for Boston College. Daniel Abram is out. And Greg Williams, the freshman from Fairfax, Virginia, checks in replacing Dan Cross for the Florida Gators. This is a Florida team that has won 28 ball games, most in the 75-year history of the school. Here's Curley. Yeoman's work inside. As plain as pound cake, but effective. Nothing fancy there. Jericho Bowden hooks it over to Greg Williams. has been complaining about loose elbows and I think he got the favorable call there. Let's take a look. Here's the angle. Oh, you got it out there a little bit. You got to keep that thing tight to your body if you don't want to be missed. You have to look like an uncut chicken when you're going to try to drive on the guy. Otherwise, you're going to get called for that chicken wing. I got the visual. Okay. All right. Okay. Basket counts. Bill Curley. Foul is on Dirkle vote. And that's his second. And it's also the fifth team foul of the first half. So the clerk checks back in, Dirkle, Bolton, and Hill. Apparently no hoop. No basket. There's one. <laughs> Gerard Abram. They got three instead of the two. 15-11, a four-point edge for Boston College. Away the foul problems for Florida now. He's got two on the bench with two fouls each. The jump hook, dandy play. Good position, strong finish. Paul oh, Grant is fouled. A well executed play that time. They ran a little pick and fade up top. And then the screener, Grant, just rolled to the cup. Jason Anderson guilty of the foul. Time has been called. BC up by two. Florida already with six. BC only with one. And obviously, when the game is comprised of two teams so evenly matched, the little things, obviously rebounding, but free throws become a big factor in a tight game, obviously. And here's another foul. And Daniel Abrams will shoot two as Marty Kuzma gets whistled. You know, Jim O'Brien talked about that during the timeout. Hey, guys, we have a chance to get them in the bonus less than halfway through this half. Let's get inside out of this timeout. And Daniel Abrams, strong to the rack, able to draw the foul. The other night in their victory over Indiana, a team that shoots from the free throw exceptionally well, they limited Indiana to four of five free throws. And that's right. They made, I think, 13 of 21, but the volume is what was so surprising in that game. Abrams, one of two. is joined now by Craig Brown, Jason Anderson, LeClerc, and Craig Williams. One of the keys for Florida, because they aren't an explosive team, is to maintain contact with the opposition. Travel. Well, to compound the problems that go along with the fouls, that's four turnovers. Mm -hmm. You see the three-point shooting for Boston College, the team fouls, those two things, the story of the first half, Dimitri Hill on the bench and has been for the last five minutes with two foul fouls for Florida. Abrams a little too strong with that jumper. Three-point Boston College lead. That'll be Florida's ball to throw in. And Ron is going to go to his bench again and get Dan Cross back in the lineup. And he replaces the senior, Craig Brown. Demetri Hill is also going to check back in with those two fouls. Ron 
Kruger taking a bit of a chance here, trusting that Demetri Hill can give him some minutes and some presence inside offensively without picking up foul number three. Hill guarded by Abrams. Traveling, that's five, as in turnovers. And now let's see how quickly Boston College might go inside to Daniel Abrams, who will be guarded by Demetri Hill. Excellent call, Vern. That's exactly where I'd go with it, especially if they're man-to-man, -man, and they are. And there's Daniel, isolated. Puts it over Demetri Hill for two. Well, Demetri has to play him tougher before he gets into that prime post position. Obviously, with two fouls, it's a lot more difficult to be physical. This time they got Abrams with the foul. They hit hips. They locked up in there, Vern. And there was a rumble. <laughs> Jim O'Brien graduated from Boston College, 1971. Played for a couple of decent guys, Chuck Daly and Bob Cousy. Right. Two Hall of Famers. Looks back for Greg Williams. Here's Cross. They get it. Skip pass. The penetration and the off-balance shot. Jason Anderson with the footpath. Well, he was really a nice contributor off the bench Friday. Didn't get any points, but his activity, he got five boards, a lot of hustle, and good, solid defense. Mark Malinsky has checked in for Boston College, number 32. He had a quick eight points off the bench in the win over Indiana. There's the entry pass to Danny Abrams, loose ball, and it's saved by DeClerc. Here comes Florida. Watch Demetri Hill trying to post up quickly. Good job by Curry. Oh, shot, and what a tussle. DeClerc can't quite save it. Malinsky, Isley's got it for Boston College. And he's fouled by Greg Williams. That's 18 fouls, and that is the second foul on Greg Williams. Boy, you love this action on the offensive glass by Florida. Look at the clerk. That second jump almost gets him a basket. The rebounding is about tenacity and desire and timing. The clerk did everything but squeeze the orange that time. Howard Isley at the free throw line. His first of the day, he's hitting 77% for the season. He and Curley, the best two free throw shooters on the ball club. Howard Isley, a senior from Detroit, and one of the four seniors on this uh, ball club who started out their Big East careers 1 and 15. And I had a chance to see them quite a bit those first two seasons, and you could see them growing and growing, but it just was difficult for them to put together wins. And yesterday I asked Jim O'Brien about the leadership that these four seniors provide, and does any one particular guy serve as the rallying point? And he said, no, they're all a little different, and they basically do it by committee, which is good and bad. You'd like to have one take charge guy, but... None of them wants to step up, so they do it by committee and obviously have done it quite successfully. Now you've seen it. Oh, oh, oh. Sweet by Dimitri Hill. I said, Dimitri, what's the strongest part of your game? He told me, finding a way to put the ball in the hole. Doesn't get any simpler than that. It's called Demi Hook. It's 20 to 17, 8.25 to go first half. Isley, no roll. Dimitri got the ball. Now he's 20 pounds away from trying that three-pointer, but it crossed his mind. And he certainly gave it a thought. Von Kruger said when you lose 20 more, you get a chance to shoot three, but now another turnover. That's six. Show me what you got, big fella. Sit down, catch it, and then get busy. Mark it up. 
<laughs> we talked about the wide body that got him in position, but soft hands and good feet. And those are the things you need to be effective in the post. Paul Grant replaces Curley in the lineup now for Boston College. 7.49 remaining first half. Here's Paul Grant. Boy, that little five, five line jumper is available. Florida really sagging it in. That ball deflected. That's five Boston College turnovers. Here's LeClerc with a jump hook. That's the shot of choice for the Gators inside. And it's a difficult one to block because you put your body on your defender, then you extend the ball away from it. Isley. Rebound, Florida. It is a slightly partisan Florida crowd. <laughs> that is an understatement. Grant. Yes, what a counter. Yeah, that's the shot that's available, Burn. Between the dotted line and the free throw line, because Florida's packing it in, BC's big guys can spot up there and get that little 12 footer. Nice off balance shot by Anderson. Good ball adjustment in the air. We're seeing what we thought we would see, a closely contested, well-played game, despite the turnovers by Florida, the shooting percentage for both teams in the 50% area. Isley. Abram passes on the three, loses the ball. Anderson. Flagrant foul, deliberate. Shoot two of the ball. said he's sometimes the most excitable guy on the team. At yeah, that time, his feet got too fast for his body. And here's Anderson. And see, he's got a breakaway there. So the hard foul is called on the breakaway. He had a clear lane to the goal. How could be guilty? Two free throws plus the orange. Anderson shoots a couple. He's a 62% free throw shooter. This is the first attempt. Oh, and it draws oxygen. There are many things I've experienced as a player. As we take a look at Jason Anderson, and there's the grab and the push. But one thing I know nothing about from personal experience is an air ball from the foul line. I can't relate to that. I, just, <laughs> I can't offer any insight about how that feels. I was waiting for you to... Well, he comes back and gets this one. Now they've got the ball. The first time has been called. It's been a big run for Florida. They lead by two. Will inbound for Florida after that deliberate foul. 24-22. Largest lead for the Gators in the ballgame. Kuzma's back in now, along with Dirkelboat. Here's Brown. Beautiful shot. Right in rhythm. Catch and pull the trigger. That's the largest lead for the Gators. Five points. Curley has checked back in. He's calling for the ball. Dimitri Hill is out of the lineup now for Florida. There's Curley. Oh. <laughs> Lithering to the cup. Good little bounce pass to the baseline side. Got him to the basket. Florida up by three. They've got Kuzma, Dirkle Bowden. That's shot short. And Danye Abrams comes down for Boston College. Gerard Abrams, Isley, Huckabee, Curley. This is the starting five. The floor. Now Curley for two more. Oh, what a sweet little jump hook. Well, he plays so hard and with such intelligence in there. You know, you look at him and you wonder how he's able to do damage in the paint. Well, it's all about mindset in there. You don't have to have a rip to shreds body to be effective in there. You just have to have a willingness to get in there and demand your presence. Weisman rings out. Gerard Abram comes down to Boston College. So now they're on a bit of a mini run. They have a chance to reclaim the lead. Largest lead by either team, five. Huckabee. Abram. Danye Abrams with the putback. What happens when they 
Hedge you out with the three. If it misses, obviously you've got a tough time getting back to block people off, especially on the weak side board. And that time, Abram just carved out. Abram just carved out space for himself on the weak side. Curley has Brown's rebound. Isley forces the issue. Saved by Boston College. The last two possessions, Florida has tried to have dessert before dinner. They've been a little quick with their shot. Wiesma got away with a shove. <laughs> I like that, by the way. 28-27. Thompson. Oh, good pass. Beauty. Craig Brown with the basket. Florida back on top. Both of these teams, especially with the last five minutes, playing with a high level of efficiency offensively. Running good hard cuts, good looks, and good shots. Abrams saves it. Thompson for Florida. Here's Dan Cross. He'll take the shot. Love it. Love that burn. Defenders backpedaling. Make them think you're going to the cup. Then stop on the dime and pull up with that transition jet. Saves it, gets it to Abram. Florida up by three, 243 to go first half. Shots there for Abrams? No. Wide and hard. He was undecided about whether he wanted to shoot that or not. At the other end, shot doesn't go, and here comes Boston College. Abram. before the collision. Right. Little bump on the floor. Here it is right now. Little shake and bake move. Nice crossover right there by Abram. And there's the foul. And then there's the collision. The foul was prior to the collision. Craig Brown obviously didn't like it. Foul was on Craig Brown, his first. Andrew DeClerc is checked back in. Lon Kruger. Letterman at Kansas State, head coach at Kansas State for four years before he came down here to Florida. Ron Kerger was the pride of Silver Lake, Kansas, a small town near Manhattan where he was a three-time, or three-sport All-Stater, baseball, football, and basketball. Yeah, he, and I, I'm so impressed with both he and Jim O'Brien. I've been around Jim O'Brien a little more, but had the chance to meet and see Lon Kruger at the press conference and both of these guys really exude class in every way. 31-29, 12 to go first half of play. Winner goes to the final four in Charlotte. The Clark travel. Seven Florida turnovers. The lead still belongs to the Gators in time is control. Son of Lon and Barbara Kruger. They also have a 13-year-old daughter. Yeah, it was interesting at the press conference we talked to Lon Kruger. Somebody said, we hear you have two young athletes at home, and he's kind of like you were. Excellent basketball players. And Lon said, well, I don't know how good he is, but he enjoys playing. Which at this stage of the game is obviously what you want your kids to do. To enjoy competition. Isley ties it up. 31-31. The clerk and Thompson. That basket will not go as the clerk fights for the rebound. And they're going to call Boston College with the foul. Well, I tell you what, Andrew DeClerc is really doing a nice job keeping balls alive for Florida. When Boston College doesn't defensive rebound, look at him go inside. Lower body root canal on Curly and then trying to get upstairs to pull in the ball. I think they whistled Abram for that foul. Tony Mickens is in the lineup, number 33 for Florida. He's got the ball now. Nice pass. Goaltending? Whoa! I don't know. What do you think? No, I think that's a good call. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Billy Curley got beat on the little banana cut. And 
Jim O'Brien here to. Oh, on second thought. Ah, I was a, I was about to defer to your intelligence and wisdom. <laughs> now I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. That was a close one to call. This one goes against Kevin Robowski of Boston College. You know, you pointed out, Vern, earlier the foul discrepancy, and really Boston College hasn't maximized that in the, from the time that they got Florida over the limit. They got them over the limit before the 10 minutes. Right. I think it was about 11 minutes to go in the half, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I don't know how many free throws they've shot since then, but certainly not as many as you would have thought they would. Well, they've only shot a total of eight in the game, so not a lot. Yeah. On the line, Florida ball. See, I think this game right now has been a pretty smooth game. Florida's turned it over a bit, and they fouled a little bit, but compared to the prior games they played, this doesn't have that ugly tone to it. And I think that favors Boston College, simply because they have a little more explosiveness and a little more spurtability in terms of what they can do offensively. Cross. College as Isley is fouled by DeClerc. That's his first foul of the game. Well, you have to love his enthusiasm and his energy. I mean, he just determines to outwork whoever's defending him. And that's what that offensive rebounding about is about chasing down those missed shots. That is the tenth team foul, so Isley goes to the line shooting two. Isley knocked down the little teardrop jumper to give Boston College the four-point cushion against Indiana late in that game Friday. It wasn't the game winner, but it certainly was the game sealer. Jim O'Brien coached his team to victories over two of the powerhouse programs in the country, North Carolina and Indiana. Only once before had a coach defeated Dean Smith and Bobby Knight in the same tournament. That was Roy Williams of Kansas. But he didn't have to do it back to back. Nice little fat toy there, Vern. You left me hanging when you mentioned there was another coach that had done it. I'm glad you filled in the gap for me. Final 10 seconds, stolen by Robowski. He can't get the rebound to go, and we have reached the halftime. It's been well played, and as close as we had hoped. Florida leads Boston College 35-33. We've got 20 to play. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Final Game is sponsored by... So where can you go to be the envy of the neighborhood? Lowe's. Because Lowe's knows gardening. Florida Gators seem to have everything in rhythm right now. They're up 35-33 as we get set for the second half. They have had a big edge, Clark, in rebound. There you see the total, 20-11, 6-1 on the offensive glass. Take a look why. Good defense, good defensive rebounding position. Last eating is easy when you do that. Look at this. They're all great up. Those are the field goals. The orange dots represent made field goals all inside. And we are underway. Florida's got the ball. Brown, Dimitri Hill, the clerk who had a big, big first half on the boards, along with Thompson and Dan Cross. Starting five is also on the floor for Boston College. 35-33. And they called Danier Abrams for the foul. Right now, let's check in with Leslie Bissell. Vern, at halftime, Jimmy O'Brien told his team they were standing around too much on the perimeter. He wants them to reverse the ball. He said, that's what got you here. He also said, don't concentrate so much on getting to Bill Curley that you've lost the game in transition. The last thing he told him, 20 minutes to the final four. Vern. Rebound comes down for Abram this time. 
good move. Whoa, dandy. Oh! Two shot with the shot. But they caught Craig Brown with a shove from behind on Curley. inbound to rather gets it in to Abram and he draws a foul that's the second team foul and the third on Dimitri Hill well Daniel Abram's able to get excellent position inside Dimitri Hill playing behind allows him to catch it it's tough to play defense against a big strong guy like Abrams after he catches it now Hill has picked up his third foul but you know Andrew DeClerc stepped in he had 12 points and six in the first half, he only averages nine points. Lon Kruger has opted not to make a move right now. Well, I think part of that is due to the fact that he knows Andrew DeClerc has played extremely well, and he'd like to see if Dimitri Hill can play with the fouls and continue to give them that presence inside that was so successful for him in the first half. Oh, what a look from Huckabee. Huckabee found for the layup. And Boston College is on top by one. Dimitri Hill, after just picking up his third, had to escort Abrams to the hoop that time. Stolen. Isley. Foul is called on Thompson. And Howard Isley will go to the line. The poor telegraph pass, and Isley just stepped into the lane. He actually loses this ball on his way up prior to being. Isley has a chance to go into double digits now. He is four for four from the line, thus far in the ball game. As a team, Boston College nine of four, now make it ten of thirteen. Boston College, the adjustments Leslie talked about, getting some transition, that's critical against a team that's so stingy in their half-court defense, so they have to try to push it ahead before that defense is set up. And then they've got to continue to move the ball around and look to shoot the three-point shot aggressively. They only took five three-pointers in half number one, and they're averaging about 23 points field goal attempt per game in the tournament. Double team on Thompson. Looks underneath for Hill. Oh, and puts off the left hip. The feet That is fella. The left-handed feet hook. Right, right. People look at his body and think, this guy play. Believe me, he can hoop. There's another rebound for DeClerc. And Cross has it for Florida. 38-37, Boston College up. That's seven rebounds for Andrew DeClerc in the ball game. Hill stripped away, loose ball. And Florida retains possession. Florida trying to get to the final four for the first time, where if they do, they will join their traveling partners from last spring. They had a tour of Australia, and they toured with the Arizona basketball. Is that right? Oh, you're full of factoids today. Stayed in last night. <laughs> Early dinner, a lot of research. I love it. Stolen again, Huckabee. Settled for Thompson. From Andrew DeClerc. What a game he's having. Living large. DeClerc stepping in. Hill unable to play big minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. But Andrew DeClerc with the foul flush. He's their most emotional player. And that flush will make you want to holler. Checked in for Dimitri Hill. Hill rests with the three fouls. Florida up by one. Curley. Oh, it's a lapse on Curley, and he gets the second chance. They have gotten away with one there. He lowered that shoulder. But the officials deemed it more acting than contact. Curley has 10. 
join Abrams and Isley in double digits. He had 11 in the win over Indiana the other night. And Clark leads all scorers with 14 points. Boston College. I think Boston College. 
Pollard riding the car with the brake on, Vern. They're not crisp and moving the ball as they were earlier in the game. So they're not getting the quality looks from behind the three-point line that you want. Here is the deflection and then the tussle for the loose ball. Gerard Abram gets a hand in there to force the held ball, keep possession for his team. But BC just not as crisp. They're looking inside a little bit, and they've rushed a couple of three-pointers, but they need to find a way to get that inside-outside balance in sync and quick hit the Gators because the longer you go into the shot clock, the tougher Florida's defense gets because they dig in. Thank you. They're resetting the shot clock now, and it is back at 35, and Boston College will inbound. Huckabee gets it into Abrams. Prior to their win over North Carolina, which came four months to the day before the football team beat Notre Dame, Jim O'Brien showed his team a videotape of that football victory over the Fighting Irish. Well, we asked him what he was going to do last night. They had put together film clips of memorable upsets in the final four. Appropriate. They're trying to get there for the first time. Villanova came to mind immediately. North Carolina State in 83 came to mind. Two misses. Abrams got it. 45, 43, 12 and a half to go. Winner. I'm sorry, Vern, but what happens? Boston College would like to run, but they're only getting one lane field. Anderson fouls Curley. The shot is not falling for Daniel Abrams. It's been there and he's taken it. Here you take a look. See, Abrams gets it out. Now there's nobody in the right lane. Nobody is in this lane there. And in order to run effectively, you've got to be able to get two lanes filled and somebody in the middle of the court. Bill Curley's first of the day. He is an 80% free throw shooter for the season. And that's a rare combination to have a guy shooting better than 56% from the floor and also over 80% from the line. That's rare company. 47-43. Oh, dandy pass from Anderson to Hill. Ball reversal there. You swing it from side to side, it makes it tough for inside defenders to get back on top of the post player. Curley. He'd like to have that one all afternoon. <laughs> he certainly would. Jim O'Brien wouldn't mind seeing him step out and bury that one either. 14 points for Curley. Boston College now in the zone. Looking to slough in and try to keep the ball from inside. Abrams with the quick hand. That's what you call rack to rack with authority. Largest lead of the game, six points. Oh, the answer from DeClerc. The clerk was 16. Florida trails by four. 11:04 remaining. Daniel Abrams will pass on the shot. He's two for seven from the field. There's the entry pass. Two for eight. The clerk with another rebound. Nine rebounds for Andrew De Clerk. He's having a career game here today, Vern. Dimitri Hill, no. Curley can't save it. Florida ball. championship so far well how'd you like to do a little skying of your own no problem with an achieve a special edition from oldsmobile you can leading score along with abrams of 14 points 
And for Florida, Andrew DeClerc has 16 for game high on us. Here's DeClerc with the ball now. That shot to three. Curley with a rebound. Florida, one, a zero for four from three-point range in this half. Boston College is one out of six. And the Florida guards have really been a non-factor here in the second half. Have they been negated or just... Well, I think they've had so much success, Vern, going inside to the clerk and Hill when he's been on the floor that they've decided to stay with that particular strategy. Jason Anderson gets the steal for Florida. But I think as we come down the stretch, obviously Brown and Cross have to look to create for themselves. This is Craig Brown. Now this is Dan Cross. And the clerk... Another offensive board for Andrew DeClerc. So right now what we see developing obviously is Florida able to do good damage inside on the boards and also with DeClerc and Hill and BC trying to uptick the tempo a little bit. And what I foresee happening is as long as Florida can stay close, then they've got a chance to grind it out because their guards, you know, can make big shots. If Boston College is able to put together a little spurt and get it to double digits, then I think they put it on Cruz and are able to walk in with the W. That last foul on Isley was his first, by the way. Here's Cross for two. Those are the kinds of tough shots I'm talking about. Manufacturing shots, good elevation, good sprint. The bottom of the net. Kevin Lebowski, number 41, is on the floor now for the Boston College Eagles. The clerk comes out to defend him. Huckabee off the mark from three. One of seven from three-point range for the Eagles. They're not shy about putting it up. And I think Jim O'Brien is pleased with the fact they're looking at it. Obviously, he'd like better results. But you've got to do what you've done to get you here. And they tried to step it up a little bit in the second half. A chance for Florida to pull back into a tie or grab the lead if they can a three. Here's the clerk. He'll take the shot. Isley, after Lebowski, controlled it to him. Maybe a step out of Andrew the clerk's comfort range. Curley. Should have flushed it, Vern. Undecided that close to the goal. Turn it over and throw it down. And cross guarded by Malcolm Huckabee. Eight minutes to go in regulation. Winner goes to Charlotte. Arizona and Duke are already there. Arkansas and Michigan play for the final spot later this afternoon. The shot clock at seven. Anderson, Dimitri Hill, fouled by Bill Curley. Nice entry pass by Gerard Abram. Good drop step here. But no period on the sentence as he was undecided about dunking it or laying it in. Spin move, penetration, nice lead for Dimitri Hill. And Curley gets there late and picks up the foul. Well, they've now given it to Robowski instead of Curley. So it's on 41 instead of 15. And Dimitri Hill goes to the line. This only the third field free throw attempt for the day. Arizona with a convincing win over Missouri yesterday. Michigan and Arkansas meet in Dallas at 4 o'clock Eastern this afternoon. Duke with a terrific job from Jeff Capel and Antonio Lang. And then not to speak about the defensive job Grant Hill did yesterday. They were outstanding defensively. Time has been called here. We're tied at 51. A tradition unlike any other. The master. The Kruger family moved down here from Manhattan, Kansas four years ago. Lon Kruger took over a program that was 7 and 21 the year before he started the program. In the NIT each of the last two years, now in the NCAA searching for their first spot in the Final Four, as is Boston College. Be hard pressed to really root for 
against either one of these guys or these programs because they've done such an outstanding job over the last few seasons. He's traveling. to the quickness of BC. Boston College outscored Indiana 18 to 4 yeah, in the last 655 right, of that game. Right, seven minutes of that ball game. That's where we are here. Danye Abrams comes out of there with the ball. Huckabee. Huckabee. He really hasn't looked at the goal. He averages 11 points a game. And He's been bagel today, but he's only taken a couple of shots that I can recall. Three, as a matter of fact. Stolen by Brown. Three on one. Jason Anderson, Florida leads. Well, Byrne, it's become now the grinded out type of an affair that Florida wants. Abrams fouled. Fouled hard by Mickens. Let's go back to the steal by Craig Brown. Just anticipates the pass. Actually, it seemed like it was deflected by the clerk in the lead for Anderson. And he knows how to finish. Boy, does he give them a nice lift off the bench. He's got a couple of hoops, but he gives them a versatile defender. Here's a guy, Jason Anderson, that can defend a point guard a second guard, and also a small forward. Danny Abrams has had problems from the field today, but he's now 5 of 7 from the free throw line. Demetri Hill comes in. Tony Mickens gets a rest. Hill plays with three fouls. Mickens stepped in in limited time and helped the Gators tread water a little bit in the absence of Demetri Hill. Ron Kruger got a nice contribution from Mickens. 53 remaining in regulation. Largest lead by either team, six points. That one belonged to Boston College. Largest Florida lead in the first half was five. Hill backs in. Stolen. Isley. Here comes Huckabee. It's two on two. And Malcolm Huckabee kicks it back outside. Isley looks inside for Curley. pass Isley to Curley. Cross has got an awful lot of the orange there. Let's take a look from another angle. Good position. Couldn't really see anything from there other than the ball get squeezed out. That is the sixth team foul. Huckabee. Curley. Over to Curley. the idea it means a little. Curly with 16 points. He's 2 of 2 from the line. Boston College leads by 3. And they are 16 of 19 from the free throw line today. When you look at evenly matched clubs and tight games, the free throw game becomes a game Remaining. Curly. Blocked by 
Craig, Craig Brown. And a chance for Florida to reclaim the lead. What a matchup this is. Huckabee and Cross. Brown. from the only senior in the starting five for Florida. Isley. No. Brown with a rebound. defensively because Hill came from the weak side and got open in the post. Lead is now five. The clerk with 16 points and 12 rebounds. Craig Brown is at the last nine until that free throw for Florida. UF hitting 46% in the second half. They lead by six. Austin College at only 34% and not having their typically strong day from behind the three-point line. Huckabee. And he will not fall for the senior, Malcolm Huckabee. But he will shoot free throws. Well, he had the wrong rotation on that ball, man. It would have been spinning the other way. It would have found the bottom. Watch this. You'd like to see him use the left hand here. But see that ball spinning away from the rack. If he could have spun it towards the goal, he had to do. I, mean, I guess that's asking an awful lot when you're driving to the basket and you're running into people. 
Dimitri Hill's fourth foul. He'll stay on the floor. And Huckabee, who is scoreless today, goes to the line. Not a terrific free throw shooter. 57% over the full season. Well, you talk about impressive coaches. How about all of these kids? Huckabee, one of four. One of the four seniors that showed up at the press conference yesterday. Articulate, solid, thoughtful, and confident. One of two. His first basket of the day. The lead is five, 245 to go. Great ground. Stolen by Isley. Oh, my. Clean block for Detroit. No go 10. Boy, I don't believe that. That ball seemed to be in the cylinder. from behind. Watch it. He blocks that ball into the cylinder. Excellent no call. He blocked that ball over the goal. What a play by Andrew DeClerc. Hard to define who's provided the greater heroic effort for Florida. Andrew DeClerc or Craig Brown? Well, if you give out game balls, you better have three of them. Certainly at least two for those two guys you mentioned. talked about it at the top. We talked about BC needing to shoot the three, and if it became a grinded out type of an affair, the Florida would be the favorite team. And at this point, it's the kind of game Florida wants and the kind of game they excel in, but the weapon of the three-point shot makes Boston College a threat even this late. Jason Anderson out to defend the three. Curley and the clerk engaged in a waltz down on the baseline. Andrew DeClerc with a foul. That's his third. Robowski checks in for Boston College now. Third foul on DeClerc. That is the tenth team foul. So final 2-0-3. Boston College shoots two. Obviously, you like to see Curley at the line. 80% free throw shooter. checks back in. Florida has two timeouts left. They have 10 team fouls. The possession arrow favors Florida. The clerk and Hill both in the lineup. Curley gets one or two. And I think Boston College, they've had a little success with the trap. Maybe should have gone to it earlier. But now out of desperation looking to force Florida into shots that they don't want to take right now. Brown. Now the shot clock's at 10. Stolen by Curley. 133 remaining. You don't, you don't have a good three, Burn. You want to try to get inside. Abrams comes back out. Huckabee spots it. Misses. The tip by Robinski. No. And a foul underneath is called on Jason Anderson. A beat or two in the game like this, doesn't it? And your heart goes out for both of these teams. Because they're such classy individuals, the coaches and the kids the same. They epitomize all that's good about college basketball. 
Kevin Rabowski gets the first of two. They're going to get back into their trap, their half-court trap. Make Florida use some time and try to force a turnover. The trap has led to a couple of empty trips by the Gators. They're close with another rebound. He got position on Curley. No need to foul here. will check back in for Boston College. Boston College has called timeout. They do so with 63 seconds remaining. Florida. Andrew DeClerc, 13 rebounds in the game. Four-point margin. I try to throw it inside. They do. Offensive foul. I know. Did we call it on DeClerc? No, I think he called an offensive foul on Curley. I just talked about it a while ago. DeClerc finally got to his left hand. See, three or four times before, DeClerc let him catch it inside and then stayed on his right side. But this, this time, he stepped right in there, and there you see the reaction. But he played it the way you have to if you're going to let him catch it. Beat him to where he wants to go. Andrew DeClerc. The foul on Curley is his second. And it's the eighth team foul. This one on Ger Gerard Abram. I'm not so sure Jim O'Brien wanted him to take that foul. Yeah, he's certainly giving him an earful. It's a four-point game. At worst, it could be six if he makes both. So, obviously, Boston College is still in it. But because they have been so successful with their recent pressure, you at least want to give yourself a chance to force the turnover without committing the foul. Oh, to be 10 years old and have your dad as a coach, huh? Oh, man. It's got to be... An absolute blast for Kevin Kruger. Got the first. Did Craig Brown, the senior from Steelton, Pennsylvania. Well, they were quiet for a little while. Cross and Brown, and Cross still hasn't put up big numbers, but this guy certainly has exploded. The most critical stretch of the second half will have been owned by Craig Brown. Mm -hmm. He hit three straight three-pointers. There's a steal by Florida. Here comes Brown to cross. Got it. <laughs> Foul on Dimitri Hill. That's his fifth. And he fouled him behind the three-point line. But here's the man of the hour and moment, Craig Brown. And look at the unselfishness here. He could get a layup, but leaves it for his partner in crime, Dan Cross. Dimitri Hill has fouled out, but he's going to enjoy this moment before he departs the court. And for the limited time he played due to foul trouble, he got 12 points. He packed a lot of production into his time on the floor. starting for Boston College at the line. The green may be over. Well, that's Cortez. But my, what a ride they have had and what thrills they have given us have been lucky enough to witness it. Yes, sir. In succession, this ninth-seeded team 
down by Georgetown by 23 points two weeks ago in the Big East Tournament has knocked off Washington State, North Carolina, and Indiana before falling behind by six points with 34 seconds to go here. Isley gets two. The lead is five. Foul. That's four on Gerard April. And that is the tenth team foul on Boston College. Greg Williams, a pretty good free thrower. 82% on the year. Obviously, that's part of the reason he's on the floor. Another ball handler, but also a guy who can make free throws. At his high school in Fairfax, Virginia, Greg Williams broke a lot of records held by Tommy Amaker, the All-American at Duke. Mm -hmm. Tommy Amaker is now an assistant coach to Mike Krzyzewski at Duke. And Duke waits for Greg Williams in Florida if they win this game. And they're up by six. Isley. Two. Timeout, Boston College. Not over yet. No way. Jim O'Brien's ball club down by four. 27.7 remaining. left. Florida has two. Both teams in the bonus. Possession arrow still favors Florida. 27.7 seconds left. Duke gets the winner of this game. And then after our game, Arkansas takes on Michigan from Reunion Arena in Dallas. Foul is called on Huckabee. That's his third. Danny Abrams checks back in and Grabowski Heads out. Dan Cross will shoot two. Dan Cross shoots two. It's <laughs> hard not to whistle when your husband's team is up by points. Yes, it is. They've got a big piece of air. Oh, here goes Cross. Howard Isley can do not but look at the floor, and he's hurt. The clerk helps him up. Huckabee for three. Nope. Out of bounds. Florida ball with 9.5 seconds left. such opportunity this afternoon. Well, you think about the legacy that this senior group will leave behind for those that come after them. Lessons of perseverance, weathering storms, and taking the Eagles one game away from the Final Four. Greg Williams gets one of two. The lead is eight with seven seconds to go. Huckabee to Bill Curley. The basket doesn't count, but it's anticlimactic. Florida has won.
was in a shade of disgrace. And now they're in the final four. Congratulations, Gators. Congratulations also, Boston College. Let's go to Leslie Visser. The improbable journey of the Florida Gators continue. They won an all-expenses-paid trip to Charlotte, North Carolina. Congratulations. Lon, you helped Boston College without a three-point basket for the last 15 minutes. How'd you do it? Well, I think Leslie, I got it again. They, they, hung, they hung in there and they fought hard and did a good job of helping one another. I just felt I felt comfortable stepping up and shooting this shot. I was feeling it at the time, and Dan Cross knew that. And uh, my teammates just worked hard to get me open, and I was able to step up and knock the shots down. Well, congratulations. You have Demetri Hill. You next face Grand Hill. Best of luck in Charlotte. Back to you. All right. The Chevrolet players of the game after Florida's victory of 74-66. week. Arizona will meet either Michigan or Arkansas. The Chevy players of the game, Bill Curley, 20 points, 7 rebounds, his final game. And Andrew DeClerc, 16 points, 13 rebounds in leading Florida to the victory. Our final score, 74-66.